Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a dive into Logo Package Express 3. Now I'm excited about this because I'm a big fan of Logo Package Express, but I have felt that there have been a couple of things which I would have loved and have been on my wish list to make my workflow even better. And from seeing some of the sneak peeks that Michael the Creator has been sending my way over the past couple of months, I really want to take a look at this because I think he's going to be ticking all of the boxes. Now, just to let you know, if you hang on till the end of this video, I will be giving you a link that will get you a discount off of Local Package Express when you buy it. So let's jump onto the computer and take a look. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to want to install the software. So I highly recommend that you close or quit out of Illustrator before we do this, just so that you get a smooth installation. It's really straightforward. Download the software for your operating system, Mac or Windows, and it's simply double clicking the installation file that you'll receive and it will install it into Illustrator. Once you jump over into Illustrator, we then go to Window and Extensions and you'll see Logo Package Express 3. Just below that on my window, you can see Logo Package Portal and I will touch on that a little bit towards the end of this video. So we start up Logo Package Express 3 and we can see here it's asking for my email address and my license key. So pop those in to the relevant boxes Click get started and it will tell you that the license has been activated. So on first look, it is uh, fairly similar to Logo Package Express 2. We've got the area to set where components and um, we've got our settings icon up here on the top right with files, names, scales, padding and info. So let's start with um, <clears throat> something which is new, and that is logo variations. So in the past, if you've had various versions of your logo, so looking at the screen here, you can see I've got my Rocky brand logo here and the various versions of it. We've got an inline version, we've got what I class as my primary version, and then we've got more of a, a vertically stacked version here. If I wanted to export each of those uh, using Logo Package Express 2, I would have to go through the export process uh, multiple times in order to get those exported out. But that's all changed in Logo Package Express 3. And let me show you why that is. So as we would normally, we would uh, select on the artboard our logo. Um, we've got the logo component here and we would click set component. So in the past, what that would do is it would just place it into here and then we would create the artboard with all of the different components. But in LPE3, it creates and adds things to the artboard as you uh, set the component in the um, LPE pane inside Illustrator. So what's different as well now is what you would do in the past is you would go back to your logo artboard and you would select the logo mark component and and add that in. But you can now do that from within the um, artboard workspace for Logo Package Express. So I can now select my logo mark or icon and click set component. And again, it will run through and it will generate uh, all of the different uh, versions for that. And I can then select my logo type and set that as well. Now, depending on the power of your PC, this will be quicker or slower. Um, I'm sort of on a mid-range uh, PC here at the office. Uh, nothing super duper and it's, you know, it's moving along nice and quickly. So in the previous version, this box here would have been for your strapline or tagline, but we can see here it's been left uh, empty and you can choose what you want to do with it. Uh, so what I want to do is I actually want to have the other two versions uh, layouts of my logo. So I'm gonna go for this inline version and then I'm gonna hit add component. Uh, and we're gonna give this, instead of it being untitled, I'm gonna call it inline logo. And then I'm gonna set the component. 
And you can see now what it's doing is it's going through and it's generating uh, the artboards that it needs for the main LPE artboard. So you can see now I now have uh, my main logo, my primary logo, and actually I'm going to call that primary logo. So if I just change the text here to primary logo, you'll see that that now changes on the board to primary logo. And I've still got one more to add, and I want to add in this vertical one. So I'm going to add component, and I'm going to call that uh, vertical logo, and I'm going to set the component. And we now have the three variations of my logo plus the elements uh, as well sitting here on this artboard. And that will save time when you're having to go through and export multiple uh, folders, multiple files, you know, at different times. You'll be able to do that all the way um, through in one uh, nice export without having to keep going back and forth into Illustrator and Logo Package Express. Now, obviously, if I had a strapline or a tagline, I could add another component there and I could add in the strapline or the tagline, or if I had other versions of my logo, I can add in the components into here. Uh, so what's next? Okay, so let's take a look at um, colors. So as we know, in Illustrator, we get full color, black, white, grayscale, and inverted. And over here in the panel, we can see those uh, shown here. Now, I don't normally export grayscale, and I very rarely will export the inverted ones. And in the past, uh, what I would do is I would simply select all of the files in the rows that I don't want, and I would hit delete. And what that would do is that would just mean that when I export my package, it won't create any of these here. But obviously that's leaving a lot of empty artboards um, here on screen. So what you can do is you can actually just turn these off and it will remove those artboards from the workspace and it just makes it all that bit cleaner. But if you decide actually, no, I do want to um, export the grayscale one, you can just switch it back and what it will do is it will just regenerate the files for that row and add them back into your workspace. Okay, so what about if you want to uh, create a single color version, you know, some other uh, variants of your logo? Well, you can create custom color schemes. All you do is you go to the custom color scheme section and click on color scheme and you can add in, uh, you know, directly. You can type in what you want. You can use the color picker or you can use color swatches. And I know, uh, for example, that the red that I want uh, to use is the hex code of that. And if I click OK, what that will do is that will go through and it will create a new row with that red. And you can do that for any color you want. You can add in as many uh, rows as you want. And obviously I can now change, I can change the, the name of that. I'll just change that to red. Um, and it will change that on the artboard. And you can, again, add as many colors as you want to do that. There is another option down here in the colors uh, palette uh, called export logos with background colors. And what that will do is, for example, if you export a white version of the logo, when you view that in the um, file explorer, uh, it might show it on a white background and so you can't see it. Uh, or if you open it up on a white artboard, you can't see it. But what you can do is you can choose export logos with background colors and it will export the um, file with the background color, which is on the artboard. One of the other things uh, that you can do that's uh, related to color, if you go back to the components tab, you can see here there's a little paint bucket down here in the bottom corner. And what you can do there is if you only want to export the full color version of your logo and you don't want to export any of the other color variants, you can just basically click on that, turn it off, and it will only export 
the full color version. You see here again, it's just removed those artboards. Um, and in the past, and you can still do this if you want, um, by checking this back on again, it regenerates them. But if I just didn't want to export any of these colors, uh, then I would just delete them um, from the board. But by switching uh, this off here, then it just tidies it up and takes those artboards away. So there's, you know, there's, it's removing clutter from the board that doesn't need to be there. Um, and that's a nice, that's a nice little touch. Uh, again, just you know, bit of usability feature there. And whilst we're here, we've got on the top left, we've got the uh, little circle. And basically, what that does is that inverts the background color that you have uh, the logo on. So just if you know, depending on what the colors are in your logo, it might look better sitting on a black background uh, rather than a white background. So you can, you know, invert those there. Okay, so what's next? Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to uh, the area of uh, settings. And the first thing that I want to talk about is padding, because padding is probably been top of my wish list for uh, top of my wish list to be enhanced in Logo Package Express because the padding that's uh, in there in Logo Package Express 2 is okay you know um, you can you can um, you know add padding and you can add padding you know independently so a different amount to each of the the four sides but it would apply that padding across all of the artboards and where you have a certain amount of padding for, let's say, the, the, the primary logo, that padding may not be correct for the logo mark or the logo type. And so I'd always wanted to have a little bit more control over that. And Michael has uh, given me my wish and has introduced that. So let's take a look at that right now. So let's take a look at how it used to work or how you can still actually, you can still do it. Um, so this is the, the padding here and you can choose whether you want pixels, points, millimeters, centimeters or inches. Generally, I'll, I'll kind of work in pixels and you can have the, the chain link connected and if I put 25 pixels in, it will add 25 pixels around each artboard. If I unselect it, I can have it so that it has only 10 at the top and 10 at the bottom. Okay, so, you know, that sort of works for, for most of these, but it doesn't give me a, a great, you know, shape that I want for the logo mark. So for the logo mark, generally that's gonna be used in uh, social media circumstances. So I'm probably gonna want that to be inside a square so that it works as a square and will work well as a circle. And I'm gonna need enough padding around that mark so that when it is a circle, it's not gonna crop any elements out. And this is where the um, individual padding will come in. So what we can do is, well, one of the things that you can do straight away as well, by the way, is you can click square padding and that will just add square padding to all of the artboards. Now, obviously that's not gonna work for this you know, inline version. There's just far too much padding around it, but you can do that if you wanted to. So I'm gonna switch that off. And you'll see when I switch that off and moved back to just the, the default uh, padding box, it's kept all of the settings that I had there, which is really good. You know, I have to kind of go through and do it all again. But what I want is individual. So I'm gonna click on individual padding. And you'll see now that it's reset it to having no padding on all of the artboards. And here we've got one of five. And basically what that is, is each of these, um, each of these columns, so primary logo, logo mark, and you can scroll through those with the arrows here. So let's start on one. And let's say on one, I want to have equal amounts around it. So I'm gonna say, I want 25 pixels around this logo here. And you can see it's only affected the artboard. If we move across to the logo mark, I'm gonna want square padding. So I'm gonna check the square padding box. And you see it's made that square, but it's also touching the boundaries on, on the top and the bottom. So I wanna add some pixels to that. So I'm gonna add in 10. There we go. And that's given me a nice icon uh, for social media. 
I move across to the next one. And let's say I only want 10 top and bottom. So I'm going to unlink that. And I'm going to put 20 left and right on that one. And then for the this one here, I'm going to select that in this box there. I'm going to leave that linked. And I'm only going to put 5 around that one. And then we're going to go to the vertically stacked one. And I'm going to put... Oh, I'm going to unlink it first. I'm going to put 10 either side. Oh, if it's going to let me Let's put 10 in here. And I'm going to put 20 top and bottom. Oops. There we go. And now we've got all of my individual padding to the way I want each of these logo files to be exported. If I switch off individual padding, it goes back to the default of where I left that. And if I go back and switch individual padding on again, you can see here that it's remembered all of that stuff. So this for me is one of the biggest things that's um, been added to uh, Logo Package Express 3, probably along with uh, the ability to export the various uh, logo variants uh, in one go rather than having to go back through it again um, and just to make this you know, a, a, you know make this a full tutorial for anyone who's never used local package express uh, we'll go and have a look at scales here and uh, what you can do is you can actually add in the different sizes you want LPE to export when it's exporting the web or digital files and when it's exporting the print uh, files as well. So you can see here that um, when you open this up, it will only have this one. Um, I've obviously been through this already, so it had remembered the scales that I'd added before, but it's really simple to add a scale. Just click add scale and put in width or height. Uh, let's say I want you know one which is height and I want it to be 400. Uh, and I can also change the PPI if I want on here. And then for the print scale, I want that to be in millimeters and I want that to be uh, 600 millimeters. And I want another scale and I want that to be just 250 millimeters. And that's obviously, that's a fixed 300 PPI for print. Um, and as I say, that will remember when you quit out of um, Logo Package Express 3, it will remember that. And, um, you know, you can kind of have that uh, show up each time you want to export your logo files. So the last thing I want to talk about is the file system. And I know that I've had some clients come back to me and say that, you know, when I've provided the local file package, there, there's a lot of folders to go through uh, until they get to the file. Um, and that's understandable. It can feel like quite a lot of folders deep to get to things. Well, in Local Package Express 3, you can actually control that. If you wanted to, for example, you can turn off the component logo folders. So that's the folders that, that are named uh, primary logo, logo mark, inline logo, and vertical logo, that would turn off those folders altogether. Um, and let me actually, I've moved this around, so let me just have this uh, the way that it would be set normally. This is how it will look when you open it up. Um, so you would have, you know, primary logo, logo mark, and then inside there, you would have, um, you know, the... Um, you can have the context, whether it's digital or print, and then inside there, you've got um, the colors. So that would be full color, black, white, um, inverted, grayscale, uh, red, blue, whatever one color ones you'd chosen to do as well. Um, I suppose whilst they're here, uh, one thing which I didn't mention is the, uh, the Pantone is no longer there. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, one is that Adobe and Pantone are no longer working together. And if you want to have Pantone uh, colors inside your uh, creative apps, your Adobe creative apps, you will need to install the Pantone Connect plugin. And um, to be honest, it's not very good as a free plugin. You do need to pay for it to get any sort of usability out of it. And also more 
from what I can hear from speaking to uh, designers, uh, especially younger designers or newer designers, they tend not to be exporting Pantones at all. They're only exporting RGB and CMYK. And I think with the issues of the inbuilt libraries inside um, Illustrator, I don't even know if you get them in the newer versions of Illustrator, was they were very much out of date, like 10 years out of date. And so it just causes lots of issues. So if you, you want to export, you know, Pantone ones, then you, you can still do that, but you'll, you know, you'd have to either use Logo Package Express 2 um, or, you know, just create uh, some manual versions of that. But uh, yeah, there is no um, option to automatically convert to Pantone um, or have a Pantone uh, artboards generated inside Logo Package Express. So I thought whilst that popped into my head, I better touch uh, upon that um, because it's no longer there, just in case you were expecting that to be there. Um, so the way that I've got this set up now uh, is that I've moved the, the context to the top. So when my clients will get their folder files, it says digital and print. And that then lets them know whether they're, they're going to be using it inside, you know, um, for their website or uh, for social or if they're going to be using it for a printed document. That gets them off to the best start and then they can go in and find the files that they need now. That's the way I've been doing it anyway, but I've been doing that manually. Once I've exported from Logo Package Express 2, I've been going in and moving stuff around manually, changing folder names and folder structures. Now I don't really need to do that because it's going to happen automatically when I export through Logo Package Express. This is obviously um, your uh, file formats. So you can unclick these if you don't want any JPEGs to be exported. You can just untick it. Um, I very rarely would um, export a JPEG for a print file. Um, colors can go a bit funny with that. Um, I do export EPS files, but what I will say is that if you check the EPS file for export, it will slow down the export process quite a bit, especially if you're gonna be exporting a lot of logo variants and a lot of different scales. Um, then you know it will, it will slow things down and it might take a little while. Um, but I like to export the EPS file because um, I'm pretty sure a lot of printers and stuff would still uh, like an EPS file uh, as a file format. Um, but I'm going to turn it off just now just so that it doesn't slow down the export for uh, this uh, review tutorial. So I've got all my logos. I've set all the, the padding. I've, I've set um, the colors that I want. I want a, you know an all red one. Um, but actually, you know what? I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna go, I don't want grayscale and I don't want inverted. Oh, I think I've just turned inverted back on by mistake. <laughs> so there you go, inverted's come back. So I don't want inverted, right? So I've turned that off now. So everything is ready to go. I'm gonna click on export logos. It's gonna ask me for a client name. So I'm gonna say it's rock your brand. And then it's gonna ask me to search for a directory. So I'm gonna click on the folder and I'm going to go to, well, I'm already on my desktop. I've got a folder created ready to go. If you didn't have a folder created, you could create one um, here. So it's now put the path to the directory in here. And you can choose here whether you want, you know, to just export print or print and web. And then you click export logos. It will now give you one last chance to say, are you ready? Are you sure to go? You don't want to make any more changes. And if you are, just click export print logos. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably speed up this next part of the video whilst this exports. Okay, so that's now all of the print logos exported and that took exactly one minute. Um, now again, that's going to, that time is going to change depending on how powerful your PC is. Like I say, mine's is mid-range. You know, it's not the most powerful uh, PC in the world. Um, and that took a minute to export the print files. And I'd imagine it'll probably take about the same for me to export the web files. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so that was actually a little bit faster. Uh, that took about 40 seconds to export. 
Um, and now you can see here, we've got this little congratulations window and it's asking about uploading the logos. Upload your logo files to a project on Logo Package Portal is the fastest and simplest way to hand off logo files to your clients. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I will talk a tiny little bit about this um, shortly. So now that they're all exported, what we can do is we can go to our folder and we can look at what we've got there. Now we've got this little uh, JavaScript file and that's related to the logo portal. Uh, the portal will need this file because what it does is it tells the portal um, the structure of your folders and things. Um, but the bit we're interested in here is the, the print and digital. So whereas before this would have all said, you know, primary logo, logo mark, logo type, uh, etc. It now starts with print and digital because I moved the file structure around inside Logo Package Express. Uh, and if I go into print, you can see now we've got all the, the component types here. And if I go into um, primary logo, we now have the colors inside there. If I go into full color, we've got the full color uh, print versions of the color of the primary logo. Um, and if we go back up and I go into digital and I go into primary logo and I go to full color, you'll see now that we've got the files which I chose and we've got uh, the sizes here in um, JPEG and PNG. So 400 pixels and 900 pixels. And you can have as many as you want in there. Just be aware that it will take a little bit longer to export. But even so, I've taken approximately 25 minutes to talk through things here. But if I'm using Logo Package Express to export client, uh, logos for my clients, honestly, the actual setup to get to the point of exporting is a few minutes. And then the rest of the time is just the software exporting the logos. Um, if you imagine that you're exporting, you know, even 50 and you're doing that manually, that's going to take you quite some time. Now get into all the different sizes you can choose, all the logo variations you can choose, and you can potentially get into hundreds of different logo files. And if you had to do that manually, you're looking at hours. And so Logo Package Express is going to save you so much time. And honestly, it will pay for itself on its first use. After that, it's just making you money because you are not taking up all of that time exporting uh, logos manually. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, review uh, tutorial part of Logo Package Express 3. So I've got one last thing to mention before I give you that discount link, and that's that Michael has been developing a client portal which integrates with Logo Package Express 3 so that when you export your Logo Package file, what it does, it will automatically upload those files to a web portal that you can give your client access to. And I've been lucky enough to see some uh, previews of that and it's looking amazing. So I'm gonna do a deep dive video into that when I can and I will upload that to the channel. So keep your eyes peeled. Now onto that discount link. So if you wanna get a discount when you're buying Logo Package Express 3, you can use the link which is on screen now. And I will also leave a link in the description or the comment section below where you're watching this video. And if you are already a Logo Package Express version two, I think also version one user, you can upgrade to Logo Package Express version three for $20, which is an absolute bargain. I hope you find this video useful. And if you want to hang out with me and other brand rockers, you can join my Discord community absolutely free. I'm going to talk about brand, design, music, movies, all sorts. It's just a little community hangout space. And you can join that at the link that you see on screen now. And again, I will leave the link in the video description. So until I see you next time, stay creative, folks. <laughs>